What's up weirdos? I'm Felicia and I like scary movies and today I'm reviewing a new Hulu film called Fresh. This movie was written by Lauren Kahn and directed by Mimi Cave. That's right, an all-female writer-director team. We love it. And here's a little plot. The horrors of modern dating are seen through one woman's defiant battle to survive her new boyfriend's unusual appetites. I think that plus the trailer makes me feel confident in saying this as not a spoiler but just as a known fact, this is a cannibalism movie. Also truly so funny, Lauren from the Sinister Sisters podcast, check us out, just texted me as I started filming this saying, I really liked Fresh by the way, did you watch it yet? I'm in a real Sebastian Stan mood. <laughs> It was so, so good and so disturbing. So there you go. There's Lauren's review as well. But yes, I loved this movie. I thought it was funny and dark and disturbing and amazing. And, and let's just start with the, the main thing that I loved. A horror film with a true female gaze. The movie starts out with our main character of Noah, played by Daisy Edgar Jones, on the worst date, the worst first date ever, that I feel like too many of us have been on. By the way, I have to say, so her bad date's name is Chad, classic, who is played by Michael from Jane the Virgin, AKA Brett Dyer, but seeing him, just delightful. But anyways, we have this bad date and then she ends up actually meeting a guy in real life that seems really nice and funny and normal and sexy, played by Sebastian Stan. And then they go away for a weekend and it's just, so everything bad happens when they go away for the weekend. But the amount of things in this movie that are like red flags that if you are a woman that listens to true crime, you've heard over and over and over again, it just made me like laugh out loud. Like, oh, I just met this guy. He's taking me out of town for the weekend, but won't tell me where we're going. And of course, who calls all the red flags out that Noah just can't see? Her best friend Molly, played by Jojo T. Gibbs, that is constantly just like, um, no, seems shady. He doesn't have social media, seems shady. He won't tell you where you're going, uh, red flag. Like she is calling it out throughout the movie. Like she is definitely representing the audience watching the movie being like, no, girl, don't do it, girl, no. It just felt like a movie made for women and I already know guys a bunch of guys that hit me up about this that love this movie so like it's not necessarily means that men won't like it but I feel like girls are gonna get it on a different level and I think that's true because overall this movie is a commentary on the exploitation of women the commodification of women's bodies and the normalization of women just constantly living in fear and being like this is fine this is fine. No, I'm scared to go out at night because I might get attacked. If someone's walking too close to me, I assume they're coming to get me. And it's just so messed up that that is what women are forced to live with every day. Okay, next up, I really enjoyed how cannibalism was shown <laughs> and talked about in this movie. It's obviously so absurdly disgusting, um, but the way in which Sebastian Stan's character and Noah deal with the meat throughout the movie that is literally coming off of women's bodies is for some reason, I guess so absurd that it ends up being funny. And I guess I just appreciate these filmmakers ability to help me get how something is so horrifying and give me some lightness around it too so that I can digest it. Ew. Why did I have to say digest? <laughs> oh no. But it's just, it's just great. Um, next up, so I read a New York Times article interview with the filmmakers and something that Lauren Kahn said about this movie that, the writer, she said, I wanted it to start as a romantic dramedy, turn into a horror movie, and then become a Quentin Tarantino film. And I feel that she accomplished that with flying colors. Like to spoil one thing for you, the title credit of Fresh doesn't come in for like 30 minutes into the movie, but that's because the first 30 minutes of the movie really do feel like a romantic dramedy like, or comedy. And then that kind of shifts us into the next part of the movie. And then at the end, like it gets so 
crazy and violent and brutal, but also still like a fun roller coaster ride, that it definitely has that Quentin Tarantino vibe towards the end of it. That is just, it's just great. And the last thing I'll say I really liked is just like the subversion of horror tropes and the final girl trope in this. I feel like they do some different things, make some different choices around how the movie ends and the women in the movie and how their journey ends in this. That That is not what you expect in this kind of movie. And I really, really liked it. And by the way, the cinematography is great and it's by Pawel Pogorzelski. Hope I said that right. And he did the cinematography for Midsummer and Hereditary, so an Ari Aster fave. And it's it's great in this. It's funny how like female directors and maybe even female horror movie watchers, please tell me down in the comments if, if you agree with this, are drawn to cannibalism movies. And I've never really like thought about why that would be. But thinking about this movie in particular, like women understanding what it's like to be treated like a piece of meat. And that's why we like the catharsis or the, um, I don't know, the whatever of watching cannibalism films. Is there something there? I don't know. Should I write a paper on it? Maybe. All right, and I think that's it. I know this is sort of like an intellectually heady review of this movie, but it really is just a, a fun ride, like the romantic dramedy into the horror. It's a fun movie to watch. So check it out, it's on Hulu. All right, and if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you in the next one. Have a nice screen, bye.